I want to talk about the weaknesses, particularly within the Catholic social justice movement. And I'm going to use the pro-life movement as my example. Last Saturday, I participated with thousands of other Christians from across every denomination that were marching for life against abortion and the genocide of abortion. And I noted certain things that I would argue are weaknesses within the Catholic approach to the pro-life issue. And more importantly, are weaknesses within the attitude particularly of Catholics to social justice questions as a whole. But these also extend to liberal and progressive Christians as well. The first of these is that I noted that Catholics were almost ashamed to be Catholic in their pro-life. They wanted to diminish the Catholic identity of their pro-life movement. And their logic was that by making it overtly Catholic, it would exclude those of goodwill. That it would put people off standing against abortion. And so for this reason, they wanted to diminish their Catholic identity. And I want to repudiate that logic, firstly by saying that if a Catholic is not pro-life because they have risen it out of their Catholic worldview, then what the hell are they doing? They've got to raise their values out of their discipleship with the Lord, as does every Christian. And if you try to separate the Christ from your Christianity, you haven't got Jesus, you haven't got Christianity, you've got a culturalism, a, a cultural Christianity. Now just move in a bit guys, because my voice is going, because I'm going to lower my voice. The next thing that I would say is that those who are of good will will join in a good cause regardless of whether the chief champions of that good cause are religious or not. If Christians were the leaders in the fight against racism, do you honestly believe that atheists who are also against racism will say, well, now I can't get involved in that campaign because it's too Christian for me? Of course not. This is silly logic. And unfortunately, it is, was prevalent among certain sections of the Catholics on the pro-life march. Activism emerges from our faith and we should be activists because we are Christian, not activists in spite of our Christianity. Pause there, pause there. Pause okay. Okay. So. Right, right action. So. Chris, the, what I saw also on the March for Life was the fact that a lot of the Catholics were intimidated by conflict and friction. I'll give you two examples. There was a, a bunch of about 20, 15 raving crazy feminists ranting against the pro-life march. And when the Christians from Speaker's Corner, who also attended the pro-life march, went to confront the feminists, two of the stewards tried to tell us that we were wrong for shouting back at the feminists. And they were doing that because they have a soy boy Christianity, an effeminized Christianity, an emasculated Christianity that is frightened of conflict or friction. Now, as Christians, Christ does not teach that. He said, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come that two might be against three, and three might be against two. He who loves his mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. You should choose me 
above your mother and father. That father will turn against son and son will turn against father. That he who is not for me is against me. Jesus Christ was not frightened of confrontation or conflict. Jesus Christ made a whip of cords and he thrashed and he beat the money changers in the temple and he drove them out of the temple. This is the biblical Jesus. This is our Lord. This is the one whom we should follow in our discipleship. He is not frightened of conflict, nor should we be. The third thing that I witnessed about the pro-life march was a lack of joined up thinking. The pro-life march argued that a Christian political party called the Christian People's Alliance should not have a table at their march. This is a lack of joined up thinking. How can you possibly want to overturn the culture of death, as the blessed St. John Paul called it, if you are not willing to platform the only political party that is completely against abortion. If you are, the reasoning was, we don't want political parties involved. But marching through London and seeking changes to the law are a political act. So why would you exclude a political party that agrees with the political change that you want to see. And the reason for this is that the organizers, like many other Christians, do not have a comprehensive political worldview. They somehow disconnect political parties from the place of the march, from the place of political change. They think in their deluded political naivety that the world is going to change because individual consciences are going to change. Societies are governed by their shepherds. You don't need to change the mind of the majority. You only need to change the mind of the minority that governs the majority, the movers, the shakers, the influencers, the law givers, the law enforcers. The Jesuits knew this. The Franciscans knew this. The Augustinians knew this. It's time that the pro-life march knew this as well. And in the spirit of good dialogue, if anyone from the pro-life march wants a right of reply, I'm willing to enter into a dialogue with them about that. Thank you very much. Contact me on BTB Soco, that's Bravo Tango Bravo, Sierra Oscar Charlie Oscar at gmail.com. Good night. Thank you, Bob Sila. Cut! So if the act of saving the mother, such as like removing the womb, yet kills the child, then that's acceptable. Because it's about doing the lesser evil. But the act of rape is a lesser evil to the act of murder. And so you can't justify abortion through rape. The lesser evil is about saving lives. Yeah. But it's also, it's also if the action of, of terminating the fetus is the result of an accident in saving the mother. It can't be the intention to kill the child. Accident of saving the mother. So removing a womb is the act of saving the mother. It's not an act to kill the child. So if the child was going to be born with a disability that would kill them a year after birth, you couldn't justify abortion. Yeah, so that, that's my opinion.
Are you a Christian yourself? Great. Thanks be to God. Are you going to join the pro-life march? So I would encourage all of you, I would encourage every Christian that they join the 2022 March for Life in London next year. Look out for it. March for Life. Make a note of it in your diary. Give yourself a holiday. There you go.